I declare this congregation for the celebration of our graduates open. So, good afternoon everyone, graduands and honoured guests. It's really great to see you here uh, in person at long last. So, I'm Professor Tom Wally and first of all, let me thank you for allowing me to come here and uh, be able to graduate you today with you today because this is a major milestone in your careers, of course, uh, and a day of celebration for you and for your families and friends, and indeed for your lecturers and for all, everyone at the University of Liverpool who supported you to get to where you are today. Now, your graduation ceremony has obviously been delayed because of the pandemic, but um, nevertheless, it's a day to celebrate your achievements with your family and your friends, and perhaps a little bit to reflect. So, my reflections on the day, uh, well, I was where you are in, uh, in a different university, studying medicine uh, over 40 years ago. It's a long time. So, my reflections on the day were that it was a day of, um, day of when I felt very relieved, very proud of my achievements, uh, sad to leave my university career behind, it had been great fun, and a bit of trepidation and fear about what the future held, but in a good way, excitement. So that's how it should have been for you. But of course, life took a different course and for you it's been very, very different. Because you've been students in the last three, five months of your time here and in your first year working as health professionals um, at a time like no other in the history of the world. Students in universities all over the country and all around the world have been hard hit by the disruption to their education that the pandemic has caused. The latter part of a university experience has been very different to what you would have uh, uh, expected and imagined. And I'm sure your first year of working as a professional has been completely uh, strange to what you anticipated it would be. And at times it will have felt extremely tough. So uh, I know you've had long days, sleepless nights and difficult times, all exacerbated by these uh, unique global circumstances. But moving from the world of study to the world of work is never easy at the best of times. Now, COVID has devastated and divided people and continues to do so, but it's brought out the, some of the best in the human spirit as well. In the Faculty of Health and Life Sciences and at the University of Liverpool, we believe that our business is to hold our hands up and to say we, have, uh, we can help solve the problems that face you, patient, community, whatever. And you, as students and as health professionals have certainly shown that spirit too. You have modelled the highest values of your noble professions. You have shown care, compassion and expertise. You are the people, the generation, who stepped forward when you were needed to help the NHS and the people we served during the worst of the pandemic. You are the people who stepped up to undertake your clinical placements in the most difficult of circumstances, um, at a time when there was no vaccination available, when PPI was either, PPE was either in very poor supply or very poor quality, um, and when no one knew where the pandemic was going, or even indeed at times what we were actually doing that was best for patients. So you're the people who stepped up at the time of the most vulnerable and critical episode in the whole history of the NHS. Over the past 18 months, we've received multiple messages from Health Education England and from the NHS providers that you work for, thanking us and expressing appreciation for all the work that you have done during that time. And they've been full of praise for the quality of your endeavours, which have contributed so much to the local and national pandemic response. Over the past 18 months, you've seen the enormous respect and warmth of feeling that the average woman and man on the street display towards you. And you've demonstrated your learning through all of this, persevering with dedication, resilience, and flexibility. And those of you who've done postgraduate courses, of course, you've managed to continue your studies while also working in your respective clinical environments, dealing with exhaustion and at times with the stress of those jobs, which is no small feat. Now, you didn't do it alone. No, no doubt there have been many lonely and scary times in the past 18 months for all of you. But you did it by supporting one another and with the support of your fellow health professionals, nurses and radiographers in the NHS, and by your with the support of your professional teachers here in the university, and also, of course, by your family and friends who are here with you today. And you and your families can be very proud of the way you responded to that challenge. And we in the university, and here I can speak for the whole university, for the Faculty of Health and Life Sciences, 
and especially for Denise Prescott as the Dean of the School of, Life, of Health Sciences um, and all her staff who are immensely proud, immensely proud of what you have achieved and the way in which you've demonstrated courage, adaptability and perseverance and commitment to others by delivering high, the highest quality patient care in the most difficult of circumstances. We are inspired by you by what you've achieved. You are truly NHS and University of Liverpool heroes. And I ask your family and friends to applaud what you've managed to achieve. Now today is all about you and your achievements and your personal successes here at the university, but it's also a day to look to the future and to feel excited about your aspirations and your career or your future study plans. One thing we've learned is that we never know what's good, what the future is going to hold for us, whether that's a global pandemic or the shocking events at the Liverpool Women's Hospital earlier this week. So we've all got to demonstrate the kind of qualities of resilience and flexibility that you've shown so well in the past year. In your professional careers, you will see diseases, new diseases come and hopefully go. When I first qualified, just that was over 40 years ago, no one had ever heard of HIV or of AIDS. It just didn't exist. So uh, that's moved over the years from a fatal diagnosis through to a condition that if it can't be cured, it can at least be managed and is compatible with a normal life expectancy. When I qualified, the life expectancy of a woman with breast cancer was about 41 months but 35% five-year survival. Nowadays, the figures are 76% 10-year survival. Again, not conquered, but huge progress in that time. And um, when I qualified, the CT scanner had only just been invented. And I can tell you stories about my experience of trying to deal with the senior radiologist responsible for the CT scanner, who was known to all the junior staff as a CT prevention officer. <laughs> so there'll be many other examples. And of how advances in science have improved a lot of people. And what will change in your professional careers? Well, as far as we know, COVID-19 didn't exist when you came to university. Uh, it's not a problem we solved yet with over 100 people still dying every day, but the outlook is much better than it was this time last year, thanks to advances in medical science. And certainly during your career, there'll be lots of new technologies, lots of new developments, which will, I hope, improve patient outlook in many diseases and conditions. In particular, as we move more towards uh, a paradigm of prevention in the NHS and away from simple treatment. So the NHS becomes more of a, uh, a health promotion system and less of a, um, a sickness service than it is at the moment. And most of you will spend your professional, professional clear careers within the NHS. Um, and the NHS will change as an organization. It's changing all the time. Uh, for the nurses among you, I remember my first day qualified on the ward. Um, seeing a nurse being bawled out by the ward sister because the wheels and all the beds were not aligned on the ward. So the world has moved on a little bit since then, thank goodness. Um, so the NHS is not always an easy place to work in, but it's an organisation that we're all immensely proud of. For all its flaws, it is still the best health service in the world, and you will want to play your part in maintaining that position. But some things won't change for you, and I'll flag up three. First of all, and you've learned this already, you need to be a lifelong learner. You're going to have to learn all kinds of things that, that will change uh, as you go through year on year. Just as you have been during the pandemic, and you need to commit yourselves to being curious and to asking questions all the time and always striving to do things better. This is the paradox of graduation. So normally at graduation, we'd tell you, um, you're fully trained, off you go. Uh, meet the public and then you better get out to meet the public and you suddenly realize oh my god I know nothing uh, but you've actually gone through all that already and you've learned enormously and appreciated that you have the skills and qualities that actually uh, help you deal with that and hopefully that's what we've managed to do for you here in the university so learn from your patients uh, listen to them they will always be your best teachers always question if in your care of those patients you're doing the right thing and if you're doing it as well as you actually can and anticipate that you're going to make mistakes because we all make mistakes. And the vitally important thing is that you forgive yourself when you make mistakes and that you learn from the mistake. So, and just as you should always be a learner, so too you should always be a teacher. 
teach the next generation students, teach your colleagues, share your experiences with them, and that's how we progress in healthcare. The second thing to remember is to support one another as friends and as colleagues because you're members of great professions and we all share the aim with those professions of improving the health and well-being of our patients and the population, whether that's the people of Liverpool or the Northwest or Hong Kong or wherever you may find yourselves in the future. Uh, be kind to one another. And the third thing that won't change is the very core of your professions and you should never compromise on that. In particular, never compromise on the compassion you feel for your patients. And compassion is the hardest of all qualities, especially uh, in the times you faced over the past 12 months. And many of you will have experienced some degree uh, of compassion fatigue or you've seen it in other people. Uh, be aware of your own weaknesses, take some time out, work with your colleagues for support in those times. Don't compromise on the respect you show your patients or on your own honesty and integrity or your willingness to go the extra mile because that's what people need most from you. You will certainly see the most difficult moments in people's lives. Your patients and ex will expect and deserve your total commitment to them. But there are many times when that's hard to give. When you're exhausted, when you're frustrated, when you're having a bad day. The only thing to keep hold of at that point is that if you're having a bad day, your patient's probably having a much worse day. So, um, give your patient hope. Um, give them patient confidence in you at times when you don't feel the slightest confidence in yourself. Um, ease the thing that most afflicts your patient, which is fear, fear of the unknown and uncertainty, and give them the sense that they're being treated by people who know what they're doing. So smile, and maybe when COVID is passed, uh, shake hands again, we're not doing that today, uh, but hug and offer a shoulder to cry on, and I'm really glad there's no one here from infection control today. <laughs> so. Grab hold of those thousand little moments, those thousand little acts and gestures that can change the lives of your patients, even in the slightest degree. So these are qualities and skills that you've displayed in abundance in the past 18 months. And I'm personally reassured, particularly as I get older, that I, can, uh, I and thousands of others can depend on you in, to deliver those qualities and skills in the future. You're privileged to be members of what I called earlier noble professions. But then those noble professions are privileged to have you as their members as well. I don't ever doubt that. I have one final piece of advice to you, which is enjoy your work and your career. You're not going to get rich working for the NHS, particularly with a pretty miserly 3% pay rise this year. But there are other more important rewards. And you should know every day that what you do really matters. And that's a great way to start your day and to end it. So let's all celebrate together. Let's thank your family and friends who are here today. The pandemic has truly made us appreciate our loved ones and shared experiences that we develop with them. And we want to take a moment to celebrate that role for your loved ones. I hope many of whom are here as your guests today. I hope you'll find a moment to thank them for their support and their personal sacrifice. And for your family and friends, of course, today is a day of celebration too. So I ask you as graduates to thank your family and friends. So let's also thank your teachers and lecturers. Many of them can't be here today because of COVID restrictions, because today is a teaching day in the university, of course. And they provided you with the training and support to become practical and compassionate and resilient in your chosen careers, with the qualities and skills required to practice in the 21st century and preparing you to work in today's health service, but equally importantly, preparing you to work in tomorrow's health service, even though we don't know what that's going to look like. So let's not forget to say a big thanks to our the best teachers of all, the patients. We in the university hope that today is a day to enjoy your return to this great city and for you and your guests to receive a warm welcome from the university. So I uh, hope you'll be able to join us afterwards for a reception in the Montfort Hall at the Guild. Uh, many of your teachers, as I said, can't be here today, but hopefully many of them will come and meet you there later on today. We hope that Liverpool will always feel like home to you, whether you called it home before you joined us or whether you've made it home since you've left the university, or whether you've just come back today for the day. We hope that whatever your relationship with the city is, that you'll always think of it as a place where you've made friends and memories which will last a lifetime. Now, our Victoria building, the one with the big clock tower, um, 
you saw in the film earlier, earlier nowadays it's a beautiful uh, gallery, an art museum. Uh, and it's our most recognizable backdrop, and I saw many of you earlier on having photographs taken with it in the background. It looks particularly good today with the sunlight on the red brick uh, against the blue sky. And, of course, that's the building that gave us the title of Red Brick University, and we are the original Red Brick University. And we take pride in that. We're not an ivory tower. Uh, this is a practical place where people learn practical things and go on to do more. But if you walk past that Victoria building, uh, and maybe you've walked past it every day, I've never noticed this, there's a plaque on it. And the plaque has the motto of the university, which is around, the, and it says, for the advancement of learning and the ennoblement of life. And that's the foundation on which this university was built. And it's a motto that continues to guide us in everything we do. Our aim is to inspire and engage and enable every student to fulfill your potential by raising your awareness, challenging and breaking some of those barriers, and providing opportunities. So, those are the key things we need to think about today. Um, it's been a long and difficult journey for you to get here. I'm delighted so many of you have been able to come here. I'm conscious that not all your class is here, that there are many absent colleagues. Uh, you've done wonderfully well. And congratulations, despite all the difficult circumstances you've gone through. And thanks to you, um, because we always have to remember here in the university, you are the beating heart of the university. You, without you, this place is just empty lecture theatres and red bricks. But thanks to you, it's a vibrant place. We have a, an active community of uh, past graduates who are vitally important to us. You may have experienced some of these uh, during your course. People who go a little bit extra again, that extra mile, to offer you teaching through uh, workshops or lectures or work placements. And now you're part of that postgraduate community as well. And we hope you'll want to take part in that and support future generations of students in one form or another. So I'd like to thank you all for everything you've done. Thank your families and friends for everything they've done to support you getting here today. And I look forward to seeing some of you afterwards. Thank you. And now I invite Denise Prescott, as presiding officer, as presenting officer rather, to uh, introduce the students. Pro Vice Chancellor, it gives me tremendous pleasure to present to you the following graduates from the class of 2020. Jay Willoughby. <laughs> Julia Francis Wilson. <laughs> Emily Vincent Briggs. Sophie Fay. <laughs> Georgina Elizabeth Martin. <laughs> Abby Olivia Birch. Roshani Jean Kar Shahal. <laughs> Lucy Francis Mason. <laughs> Jignasa Vinadrai Mehta. Claire Howard. <laughs> Sh
Charlotte Ann Norton. <laughs> Maisie May Hansen. <laughs> Sarah Louise Lana. Erin Irwin. Amanda Marie Prince. Jack Kai Hannant. Daniel Owen. Christine Burton. <laughs> Irvin Larrier. <laughs> Amy Patricia Tuttle. <laughs> Victoria Shrimpton. Paige Robin McMestry. <laughs> Annalee Thorne. <laughs> Katie Brown. <laughs> Megan Fisher. John Alexander Costigan. <laughs> Hadika Munsi. <laughs> Jamila Al Abrin. Eleanor Alice Hunt. <laughs> Phoebe Percival. <laughs> Lucy Elizabeth Perry. Georgina Kiriakou. Watch Georgina! <laughs> Jessica Louise Rosman. <laughs> Sinead O'Rourke. Emily Kate Jones. <laughs> Emma Margaret Davy. <laughs> Maureen Iola Grace Sowerby. Katie Jasmine Louise Ross McDonald. <laughs> Tilly Jo Brown. <laughs> Chelsea Louise Evans. Danielle Louise Loftus. <laughs> Alice 
Alexandra Ray Mather. Hannah Olivia Watson. <laughs> Rebecca Sharp. <laughs> Duncan James Lee. <laughs> Kelsey Crawford. William Evans Jones. <laughs> Reese Owen Williams. <laughs> Francesca Bennett. <laughs> Lauren Partington. Molly Dawson. <laughs> Rebecca Sean Robson. <laughs> Bethan Hannah Davis. <laughs> Jennifer Suzanne Tolly. Wendy Green. <laughs> Abby Littler. <laughs> Katie Gange. <laughs> Adiba Hallam. Jessica Kutfor. <laughs> Lottie Louise Kay. <laughs> Hannah McCulloch. <laughs> Owen Wagstaff. <laughs> Emma Rose. <laughs> Lydia Jones. <laughs> Imogen Lund. <laughs> Donna Proctor. <laughs> Liliana Ferreira Rocha Caldera. <laughs> Holly Ho Yin Lung. <laughs> Andrew Combs. Rebecca Crozier. <laughs> Fiona Collins. <laughs> Hannah Weirty. <laughs> Imogen Kate Haley. Verity Alden Bennett. <laughs> Kate Ro
Robertson. <laughs> Nathan Clark. <laughs> Abigail Donnelly. Joel Starkey. <laughs> Phoebe Malin. <laughs> Mia Doyle. <laughs> Ellen Jones. Georgia Renee Keyes. <laughs> Shahina Maya. <laughs> Rachel Quayle. Amber Rose Cotton. <laughs> Olivia Ashby. <laughs> Katie Ashcroft. <laughs> Alice Nelson. L. Georgia Ashton. <laughs> Danish Amin. <laughs> Lauren Rianne Morgan. <laughs> Borislava Karik. Seanad Aleri Jones. <laughs> Georgia Goodrich. So we'd like to congratulate all of you on your successes here uh, recognized today. But now I'd invite uh, one of you, uh, Sarah Lahner, who's going to talk a little bit perhaps about her experience as a student here in Liverpool. So, Sarah. Associate Post Pro Vice Chancellor, it gives me tremendous pleasure to present this um, speech today. Distinguished guests, friends, family, fellow students of 2020, good afternoon to you all. It's an honour to be asked to speak to you today about my experience of being a postgraduate student at, at the University of Liverpool. It's a privilege to be stood in front of you today, and I'm extremely honoured and proud to be a master's graduate from this prestigious university. When I was first asked to speak to you, I was a little daunted. However, I know that the University of Liverpool only ever asks of you what they know you can achieve. First of all, congratulations to everybody graduating today. The last 20 months in healthcare pandemic have been very uncertain, difficult and challenging times for all of us, especially working within the healthcare setting. And while the virtual graduations of last summer marked our achievements in a unique way, to be with you all here today amongst family, friends, colleagues and faculty truly celebrates our academic achievements. Today is a day to celebrate and take great personal pride in what we have all achieved. 
I first started my postgraduate journey with a single standalone module, with no real thought that I would take it any further. However, the lecturers, the clinical specialists who taught that module, completely opened my mind and my eyes to the learning opportunities that a postgraduate degree could offer. I've always wanted to be the best in what I can do and to progress myself for the good of my patients. I was inspired and motivated to embark on the advanced practice in healthcare master's degree. And although I took my time, I'm very honored to be here today. During my master's experience, I have been taught new information by wonderful experts in their specialist areas. But also, and possibly more importantly, I have learned how to learn and how to question and how to take that information and make change for myself, for my colleagues, and for my patients. The journey from novice to expert is an exciting one. Learning from patients, peers, experts, and the literature. But the closer to expert you get, the more you realize that you don't know. The skill of critical thinking to back up knowledge and aid clinical practice is the cornerstone of advanced practice, and it resonates in our everyday practice. The opportunity to have open discussions with my peers from different healthcare professionals has been an important part of my learning, and I'm so proud to be graduating with you all today. Studying from a master's degree whilst working full time and running a household was a slightly different experience to my undergraduate degree. Um, I think turning up for the first day of dissertation lectures, eight and a half months pregnant, probably raised a few eyebrows. Um, I would like to take the opportunity, especially to the lecturers and administrative staff at the School of Health and Sciences for their individual support through my time here. The late night email replies and the out of office hours meetings for forever helping, questioning me and encouraging me. Denise, Dean of the School of Health Sciences, my dissertation tutor, the lecturer who inspired me to start my master's journey. The support that I needed to complete my dissertation and the compassion that you gave, I am truly thankful for. To my fellow students and colleagues for challenging me and supporting me. My employer for the study days to allow me to come to university. My husband for constantly printing out journal articles and losing our home office and all of our computer storage to all of my studying. Thank you. Without you, I would not be here today. To those of you who are graduating from your undergraduate degrees, I urge you to enjoy the early years of your careers. And as you move up the novice to expert ladder, perhaps you will one day be standing here receiving your master's degrees. And with that, I would once again like to take the opportunity to congratulate <coughs> us all on our achievements today. May I wish you well on the path of your careers and in life. I hope that it is happy and healthy and hope you look back fondly at your time at the University of Liverpool and look forward to your futures, whatever they may look like. And use your critical skills that you have honed and developed to be your best and always question why. Thank you all. Congratulations, Class of 2020. Enjoy your celebrations. Thank you very much, Sarah. I'm dying to know whether it was a boy or a girl, but you can tell me later. Um, and Sarah's account illustrates lots of the issues that affect all of you, because you've all come from different backgrounds. And you've all converged here today, and you're all going to diverge again, doing all kinds of different things in the future. Your careers will be what you make of it, and hopefully we've given you a good start in that. So when I was sitting where you were, I didn't think that I'd be up on this side of the podium at any point, being the most glamorously dressed person in the whole room. <laughs> But hey, life takes funny turns. And when I was trying to think, what should I say to you today? Uh, I spoke to my daughter. My, my daughter qualified as a, graduated as a, a radiographer here four years ago. And I asked her, the talk at your graduation, what was it all about? Don't remember. <laughs> Who gave it? Uh, not so sure. So you don't remember much about that day, do you? Yes, it was brilliant. So I hope you have a brilliant day too. Congratulations for everything you've achieved. Thanks to your family and friends for getting you here and helping you through all of that. Well done to you all and congratulations again. Thank you.
And my last act for the day is to declare this congregation for the celebration of our graduates closed. And we close with a prayer in Latin. And for those of you who can't speak Latin fluently, uh, the translation is, may our university prosper. And having said that this prayer, may we all rise together. So, salva sit universitas nostra, quod precantes consorgamus. Please stand. <clears throat> Graduates and guests, thank you so much for joining us here today. Please make your way to the Mankford Hall, enjoy a glass of bubbly on us and have an absolutely fantastic